I'm going to teach you how to test ceramic capacitors. Basically, there are many kind of ceramic capacitors in the motherboard. And testing ceramic capacitors are very confusing because in each circuit, there is a technique and some values that you have to know in order to test ceramic capacitors correctly. The ceramic capacitor, for example, we get 500 ready in the multimeter. For this one next to CPU circuit, we get 004. But for those here, we get zero. Here, for example, we get 65 ready. This one, we have nine. Here, we have 300. So very confusing, especially for beginners. That's why, guys, in this course, I'm going to teach you how to check and how to test the ceramic capacitors correctly in order to avoid removing component or capacitors randomly and wasting time and of course damage God component. So let's get started. But please, my friends, don't forget to subscribe, like. Your likes really motivate me to create more unique videos for you and share the video, check my website, my Patreon page, you can join my Facebook group, all links in the description. And of course, don't forget to comment. I always do my best to answer all comments. Let's get started. Okay, my friends, the first thing is to select the continuity mode in the multimeter. Of course, you can use the capacitance mode in the multimeter, but for me, I prefer the continuity mode and basically, Using the continuity mode, you can test a lot of components, including MOSFETs, capacitors, inductors, fuses, diodes, etc. That's why the continuity mode is very important. So the continuity mode is selected. Let's check capacitors. So basically, guys, to check ceramic capacitors, we find a lot of ceramic capacitors in every motherboard, as you can see. But the testing is different from one circuit to another circuit. For those capacity guys, you will get a high reading. Or sometimes you can get no reading. This is good, no problem. Do you see? So for those capacity guys, you will get a high reading. Do you see? 500 reading. This one, for example, I have about 700. Okay. Do you see? High red. Here, for example, in 3 volt, 5 volt circuit, let's check these capacitors. I have 300, this one also. Do you see, guys? High red. But if we move on to the CPU circuit, this is basically an integrated CPU. Here we have many capacitors. Those kind of capacitor have its own testing. For example, if we check this one, we get 4. This one, do you see? Four. This is normal, guys. This one also, we get three. So, is this a short, guys? No, it's not a short circuit. Easy, and we know that uh, not just the serum capacitor, but all components next to the CPU chip, okay? Basically, all components, you're going to find a very low reading. Do you see? Four. Also, four. This capacitor, if we check here, MOSFET, do you see? We have four, this MOSFET also. So, this is normal for CPU circuits. Okay? But if we move on to other circuits, we don't have to get a low reading. We have always to get a high reading. Okay, so this is good. But my friends, if we move on to other capacitor, for example, here we have an integrated processor and here we have capacitors. Basically, in this capacitor, if we check it, we have to get a low reading about. It could be 11, it could be 5, it could be 4, etc. But if we check the capacitor and we get 0 in the multimeter like this one, so this is a short circuit. Okay? This circuit basically is shorted. Okay? This circuit here is shorted, as you can see. 
all cinema capacitors, we get zero here. Means we have a short circuit. This is not normal. This is short. So the short here, guys, could be one of these cinema capacitors, all those, as you can see, okay? It could be this driver over here. So this is basically the input capacitors. Let's check it. That holds 19 volts. So here. This is good. We didn't have a short, so the short is not in the input because the 19 volt coming from this side to this driver, and then this is the output capacitor. So here we have a short. It could be in the circuit or it could be in the CPU itself. But I'm sure that the short circuit is not in the CPU. Why? Because if we move on to other circuit next to the CPU, for example, this circuit, let's check. Okay, here also we have a short. Good. Let's move on to this one also. Okay. This one. We have seven. Good, this one. Seven, this seems to be good. Let's check. Okay, guys. Okay, let's check this side also, guys. Okay, we have 13. Okay. This, guys, because basically here we have, because for the processor, we have many channels. So if just there is one channel that is shorter, all other channels will be shorted. So here, basically, guys, the component that can be shorted, the short is in the CPU circuit, and the, the sign, guys, without even checking the component, the sign that the short is the, in the CPU circuit is that the fan spin about maybe 4 seconds or 5 seconds and then shut down, okay? So... Please remember, when you get a board, a motherboard, or a failed laptop with this sign, look to the fan, guys. Okay? I will connect the adapter. Look to the fan. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Seven, second. The fan stops. It will again spin. Do you see? It will spin like this. This is the, the problem. On and off. On and off. So this kind, this is a very clear sign that the problem is in the CPU. As you can see, it will stops again. Do you see, guys? And it will come on again and stops, comes on and stops. So the problem for this laptop is within the CPU, guys. Okay, so my friend, please remember when you get in a laptop with a spinning fan, three second, five, seven, like this, means the problem is in the CPU and especially in SV, S0, means the power states failed to reach S0 state where the CPU and VCC core are generated. Okay, so for this kind of problem, the short circuit, I'm going to make a special video about how to detect the short circuit in this board very quickly. And as I told you, the short can be in the CPU, in this driver, as you can see, those basically are drivers. This one, this one, or this one. Or if we go to the back of the motherboard, we have basically the IC, the CPU control IC. Okay, guys, this is the CPU control IC next, next to the CPU. Basically, if we check the serum capacitors here in the back, the same thing. Okay, so here we have 11, this one, zero, this one. 11 okay this one also i have zero so this is a very confusing short circuit but 
we can troubleshoot it step by step until we find the problem and by the way for the IC of course guys here I teach you how to find short circuits without the thermal camera without the voltage injector just by following the process by becoming smart and following the process because not all technicians have a voltage injector and thermal camera and the kind of tools using to detect the short circuit but here i teach you the process and how you can find short circuit and failure just using your brain and the multimeter so for this ic we can even check if the ic is the shorted one or not by checking the ceramic capacitors around the ic guys like this okay let's check this one okay no short this one no short no short no short here this one also no short guys the ic is not the shorted compound so the ic here as excluded it's not shorted the ic is not shorted this is how you can check in seconds if the ic is the bad one or not okay so the shorted compound could be one of ceramic capacitors here around the processor it could be one of these drivers some of you can ask me where is the mosfet for this motherboard the mosfets basically this driver contain the mosfets okay guys the mosfets are inside this driver as you can see guys let's zoom in a little bit those drivers here are mosfets mosfets are inside those drivers or ICs. that's why i told you the problem could be this one could be the drivers or ceramic capacitors for the IC is not the shorter component. Why? Again, why? Because I check the ceramic capacitors around the IC and are not shorted. Okay, so the IC is excluded. Guys, thank you very much. I hope that you understand a little bit the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share and hit the bell icon and of course if you want to accelerate learning you can join me in my Patreon page you can check my website my facebook group all links in the description thank you very much and see you in the next video